going on YouTube? Florida Man Videos here. Gonna transform this basic ACOG into, into this. We got the piggyback oil more, type two at 12 o'clock. We got the Tenebrex ARD Kill Flash with the flip cover. We got the LaRue Tactical QD mount. Very simple and functional upgrades. Stay tuned. I'll get into why I bought these parts and the purpose they serve me. And I'll actually do a quick overview on each one. The mount, the RMR, and the RM35 plate. Then the Tenebrex ARD kill flash scope cover. Stay tuned. So here we go. What I'm going to do is actually show you the part and then install it. I'm actually going to do jump cuts because I'm going to take these screws off, you know, reinstall the new mount and I'm going to do a jump cut so you don't have to watch me unscrew everything and put it back together because if I make it considering all the upgrades I have, maybe I'd say about a 20 minute video. So to respect your time, I'm going to do jump cuts. The first thing we're going to do, which is also probably the easiest and I'd say one of the best upgrades you can do for your ACOG is add a QD mount. This is a LaRue tactical mount. This one is the LT799. It's a five hole pattern mount. And this actually will fit uh, VCOGs, the one to six, the one to eight, the LPPOs. Uh, the VCOGs are three hole pattern, so you can adjust it on how you want it to set. The ACOG is a two pattern. So you could adjust it for the back, for the forward. I'm gonna do a neutral setting while I have it centered in the middle. Uh, cool thing about this five hole pattern ACOG mount is it is five hole pattern. Uh, traditional ACOG mounts are only two, and so you can't really adjust it. Um, technically, if I want to, I could cantilever this mount while still having it fully supported with the two screws. I could have it where the ACOG body is overhanging the mount. It's uh, similar to the Unity Cram. What it does is give you um, maximum eye relief while also giving you the ability to have um, you know, backup eye insights and also just extend your eye relief while also giving you a riser. Um, it's just kind of cool. It gives you that option. Of course, you can also do the reverse while having it forward. But like I said, I'll do it neutral. One more cool upgrade with the LaRue mount is it's actually, notice how the QD mounting points are on the right side. Because when you have it mounted on the traditional left-hand side, it's actually impeding the use of the gun um, in terms of charging it, in terms of operating it. I'll add a video here. And notice how my bolt release is impeding. I'm fighting for space with these bolt knobs. I'm also fighting for space for my charging handle. That's a pretty bad design in my opinion, having um, these extra size bolt knobs on the left hand side because it's, it's fighting for your workspace. It's a really bad design. That's why I recommend if you can to have your mounting solution for your optics, etc., on the right hand side. Be sure your, your QD mount has this feature. Not all of them do. Um, well, it's an upgrade that it's both QD and upgrade that it clears the left side of your receiver to free up your charging handle and bolt release. Let me get this installed and show you what we're looking at. Alrighty, so we're back. Got the Lulu mount added. Super nice and very easy upgrade. It's also pretty inexpensive, I'd say, in terms of the stuff I am changing up, but quite nice. And notice how I could have moved this forward one notch and it would have been cantilevered off the, uh, facing more to the rear, in case you want to get even more eye, eye relief. It bothered me for this base to be hanging over, but it's still secured by two screws, so still fully supported if that's something you really wanted to do. So let's go for the next upgrade, which is gonna be the piggyback RMR. So as you can see, it interfaces with these two mounting knobs. It gives you a 12 degree RMR mount. Let's take it out.
Make sure to keep everything before it spills out. There's quite a number of things in here. So basically what we're looking at is the actual mount itself. This is called the RM35. Be sure to research which one you need because this, the RM35 is the ACOG mount for my TA31F. If you have a LED ACOG or if you have a, you know, a different model, it may not fit, but this is what I need for my particular ACOG. Interfaces here with two Allen screws and then it also has I imagine it's anti Sorry, I was getting it out. These small screws interface, but right here, they go down here. And all they do is just prevent it from tilting downwards uh, excessively. Removing that play, that's the purpose of that. But that's what it's gonna look like. Just say piggyback offset OMR. Typically, I recommend if you want to go with an ACOG or more route, is to actually buy it separately because you're typically not saving any money if you buy a OMR package direct from a TriggerCon offering. And typically, the OMR offerings are uh, not exactly what you want. For example, they sell one that's fiber optic, tritium only, and so it's uh, like the 13 MOA yellow triangle reticle. You know, from what I've seen with the offerings that TriggerCon does for the, you know, the combo OMR ACOG, it's pretty undesirable. I recommend just to get the exact ACOG you want, get the exact OMR you want. That's what I've done. This is the OM35 mount, and this is the Type 2 OMR. This has a three and a quarter MOA red dot. Cool feature about this is it's type 2, so it's mean it's rated for um, more harsher recoil conditions, and it also has better battery connection, so it's not going to flicker. You know, you're not going to need a battery sealing plate or a moisture plate or anything. It's uh, more ruggedized. Uh, features like auto battery adjust, auto brightness adjustment, sorry. Uh, so if it's a really bright or you know, if you turn on a flashlight and it gets uh, brighter, it can actually sense it and it will turn the reticle higher and it works in the opposite if it's really dark outside or dim the reticle. So pretty nice, you can turn the, turn that feature off if you don't want it. But I'm a fan of this ACOG, you know, I can switch it between uh, Glock pistols or armor pistols or um, this is the probably the best armor you can get in my opinion. So let me get installed and show you what we're looking at. Okay, dope. and we're back. The piggyback armor is installed. Pretty simple, just these screws, those. And then obviously you gotta torque down these screws that mount the armor to the actual plate. Pretty cool. So you got your ACOG, and then when you need to do CQB, bam, there it is right there. Doesn't like to focus that well on video, but you get the idea. One thing I did not mention was with the RM35 plate, it is a RMR pattern, so you can fit other optics, hollow suns, um, just any RMR footprint optic, but maybe it's OCD part of me. It's kind of strange for me to have a ACOG from TriggerCon and then put a you know, a Swamp Fox optic on there or something. It would be, it'd be personally kind of weird for me, but you definitely could. You have that option if you want to do so. So, got one more upgrade. That's about that for that. Super nice. Adjustable LED. Turn it down. Turn it up. You can turn it off if I want. But it's got a five-year battery life. So, pretty nice. Let's uh, do the next upgrade and go from there. The last upgrade we're doing is the Tenebrex ACOG Kill Flash. And it does have a scope cover as well. Here's a part number if you need it. Tenebrex Kill Flash ARD 
for the TA31, the four times RCO. Let's take a look. So this is two part numbers. Um, this does not come with it. Um, just a simple scope cover. But this is the part we're actually talking about that comes in that packaging. Let's focus. Let's try this way. Kill flash and ascend off for the RCO. The, um, that's a military designation. Uh, put that in the comments if you know what that means. I think uh, Rifleman Combat Optic. I'm actually not sure. But what it is is a kill flash. And so uh, any light incoming is not going to reflect off your lens and possibly give away position. Kind of overkill. You don't really need it. Um, but kind of cool. We'll install it and see how we like it. Uh, Really cheap part. I think I paid uh, $40 for both these, so not very expensive at all. If I don't use it, not a big deal. Uh, this is a so this strap is permanently installed. You can't actually take this off. Um, it just goes in front and then you slip it over the bottom. I'll show you how to install it because it's actually, actually very simple install, and I'll show you this one as well. There we go. You just put it on. I say simple, but as soon as I try to do this on camera, it might be tricky. So you know what? You'll see how it actually lines up in the center of your groove. There it is, it's lined up. So it's not rotating left or right. Now I just lock it down by pulling here. So now it's actually on very taut. So it's not going anywhere, centered in the middle groove. And yeah, that, that is rock solid. So no one's gonna see, well, that's what they'll see. They can, they do make 10 bucks covers on the armor if you do really have to be a ninja, but you know. I don't notice the honeycomb pattern very much when I have both eyes open, but if I close the eye, well, actually, yeah, it's not bad at all. You won't notice it that much if you are actually using it. The camera's picking it up because I can't actually... Yeah, the, you see how you basically don't see it at all when you actually use it. So, it's not a bad upgrade. Um, I mean, ACOG's already super compact, so it's not a big deal to add a little bit extra. And if I want, I can always put a scope cover on. Just kind of that admin thing, you know, I'm not using it. I want to keep it sealed up, make sure I don't get mud or anything in here because it'd be very quite hard to uh, if you get mud in here or something it'd be quite hard to get you know something to clean out everything in there there'll probably be junk and stuff everywhere getting hard to clean in between these filters so there's that they do make a rear cover but i'm not gonna mess around too much that was my last upgrade that is my finished a car i'm gonna slap it on my m16a5 and i'll give you closing remarks Okie dokie, let me zoom out. This is my M16A5. It's a military designation. The Marine Corps adopted it for a very short period of time. What it is is a 20 inch M16, and then they added an A5 Voltor collapsing stock. They also experimented with free floating rails by Voltor. They were key mod back in the day, but, uh, but, but it was officially adopted by the military, by the Marine Corps. And then they eventually just switched over to using M4s and now M27 IARs, but kind of cool. Uh, I think it's very functional because the ACOG has a short eye relief. If you try using an ACOG with a fixed A2 stock, it's uh, quite difficult, at least um, for me. Uh, maybe I have short neck, short arms, but I find a classic stock make the, makes the ACOG a lot better. But there it is. That's my ACOG. That's my upgrades. Let me know how you think. Please comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you're thinking. Thanks for watching. Florida Man Videos.